Hello, I am Kamal Verma and in this tutorial I will walk you through how Gluster Automatic File Replication Self-Healing works. In my earlier tutorial on automatic file replication, I discussed operations under a fault-free condition. I will now walk you through how replicated writes work under fault conditions and how the system will recover using automatic self-healing once a fault has been rectified. The setup here is the same as in a prior tutorial. A replicate volume spanning two storage servers and a single client that has mounted the volume using the Gluster Native Client Protocol. Let's assume storage server 2 goes down. While it is down, we create a new file ha.txt in the export slash test directory where the replicate volume has been mounted. The Gluster client receives the file write operation and executes it using a two-phase commit process. First, it obtains a lock on the file. The lock is obtained on the first storage server in the replicate set that is up and running. We then execute the pre-op during which transaction change logs are created. The client sends this operation to each server in the replicate set. On each running server in the set, the change log marks the file as having operations, the actual data write, pending upon itself, as well as upon all other servers in the replicate set by utilizing the file's extended attributes. In our scenario, since server 2 is down, no file or change log will be created on disk on server 2. Next, the file data will be written to disk during the op phase. Subsequently, the client will execute the post op. During this operation, the change logs for those operations that have completed successfully will be cleared. In our example, the self-pending change log will be cleared on server 1. The file is then unlocked and the file write operation under this fault condition is complete. Now let us look at self-healing, which is triggered after the system has recovered from the fault and upon next access to the file. I am executing a touch operation on the file ha.txt. The touch command again will go to the Gluster native client. Under the hood, the touch command is actually executed as two operations, lookup and write, which together will update the last access time of the file. Lookup typically ensures that the file exists, the application or the user has the right permissions, etc. With cluster replicate volumes, Lookup also reads and analyzes the change logs for the file being accessed. Here the client will see that the file ha.txt has an operation pending on server 2. Pending operations indicate that some data is out of sync and needs to be self-healed. The standard write operation to update the file metadata will be intercepted and a self-heal write operation will be executed. A lock on the file is obtained. The client reads data from the known good source, writes it to the recovering server, and once complete, will reset the file's pending operation on server 1. The standard write operation will then complete and update the last access time of the file ha.txt. At this point, we have completed a full write and self-heal operation. Thank you for investing your time learning about how Gluster Automatic File Replication works under fault conditions and self-heals upon fault correction.